This is part 7 of Link to SQL tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is SQL Metal and how to use it. So what's SQL Metal? SQL Metal is a command line code generation tool used to generate Link to SQL classes. There are two ways we can generate Link to SQL classes. We can either use Visual Studio or SQL Metal. In our previous video sessions, we discussed how to use Visual Studio to generate Link to SQL classes. In this video, we'll discuss how to use SQL Metal to generate Link to SQL classes. So what's the Windows path where we can find this tool? On my machine, this is the path where this tool is available. I have this path already typed within the notepad, so let's copy that. Stick in the run window and press enter. Here, we should find sqlmetal.exe. So this is a command line tool. So let's fire up Visual Studio command prompt and do that. Click on the start button, all programs, Visual Studio 2010, Visual Studio tools, and Visual Studio command prompt. Right click on that, run as administrator. Now. There are several options that we can use with this tool and if you want all the options to be listed simply type SQL metal dot exe space four slash question mark and then press enter. This is going to list all the switches that we can use with SQL metal tool. Now on the slide we have some of the important options. Now the first option here is the forward slash server option. So this is going to specify the name of the database server. So I have the database server also installed on my machine. So the server is going to be localhost in this case. And within that database server, what is the name of the database? We specify that using forward slash database option. So the name of the database here is sample. And within the sample database, at the moment, we have got these two tables. So what is the SQL metal going to do? It's going to generate uh, entities for those two tables, right? So now, when the entities are generated, where do we want those entities to be present? That is, what namespace should they belong to? We specify that using forward slash namespace switch. So in this case, the entities are going to belong to demo namespace. And then, the generated dbml file. What should be the name of the file? We specify that using forward slash dbml option. So we want the generated file to be sample.dbml and we want that to be stored in SQL and backslash SQL metal generated files folder. I have this folder already created. So let's navigate to that folder. So SQL metal generated uh, files. At the moment, this folder is empty. Now you can give any name that you want for this folder. It's just used to store the generated DBML file. And finally, we are using forward slash context switch to specify the name of the generated data context class. So we want the generated data context class to be named sample data context. So I have this command again already typed within the notepad. So let's copy that. And let's go to Visual Studio command prompt, paste it there, and then press enter. So this should automatically generate that sample.dbml file and it should place that within the SQL metal generated files folder. So there we have the sample.dbml file. Now, in the example that we have seen, we have only used a few of the options. If you want the full list of options, please check this MSDN article. Now let us see how to use this generated DBML file in a .NET application. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So here, I have a new empty ASP.NET web application project. All I have done so far is included this connection string uh, in the web.config file. So this connection string at the moment is pointing to the sample database. Now to this project, let's also add a web form. And on this web form, let's drag and drop a grid view control. Let's get to the code behind file. Now what we want to do is read the connection string from web.config file. So let's bring in system.configuration namespace. And within the page load event, let's create a variable of type string. And let's use the configuration manager class to read the connection string. So what's the name of the connection string here? It's called sample connection string. So let's copy that. So we want to retrieve that connection string. And now let's create an instance of sample data context. Now remember, you know, within the switch we have specified uh, that we want the name of the data context class to be sample data context. Okay, so within the generated DBML file, 
we should have the class as well. So now we need to add this dbml file to this project. So to do that, right click on the project name, add, we want to add the existing item, navigate to c colon backslash SQL metal generated files folder and we want to add that. So it has added that one and if you go to the sample.designer.cs uh, file you should have all the generated classes. Notice that we have the sample data context class and if we navigate a bit up look at that it's part of demo namespace and we should also have the classes for employee and department. Alright now within the code behind file let's go ahead and create an instance of the sample data context class let's call it sample uh, db context equals new sample data context and look at this the constructor now expects a connection string to be passed and we already have the connection string so let's pass that and we can use the db context and it should have employees property which is going to return us all the employees which we are going to set as the data source for the grid we control and then invoke the data bind method. Let's run this and see if we get the employees displayed within the grid we control. There we go. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.